Hey guys, welcome back for another week of episode. This week we're going to be talking about how do you set up your restaurant business for success. And what I mean by that is we're going to dive in deep to the four types of business models that's going to be making you tons of money that would fit into your specific lifestyle. Whether you want to build an ice cream shop or bubble tea or banh mi or burger joint or you just have an amazing recipe that you want to bring to the world you need to be able to pay attention into this lesson because all these different food concepts have its pros, its cons, and also the amount of money that it's gonna be able, uh, you're gonna be able to make from them, which is the reason why we are shooting this video to set you up for success. We're gonna be talking about the different types of risk tolerance, the investment level, and also the amount of work that needs to be done. Um, for me, when I first started up my ice cream business, I never even thought, the amount of work and money that I need to be able to put in in order for me to reap what I was able to reap, which is the reason why this video is gonna help you out. So make sure you guys stay till the end, download the resources and the links below. Let's dive right in. The first type of food concept that we're gonna be talking about is the fast concept type. We're talking about something like an ice cream shop, a dessert shop, or something that's more of a specialty coffee shop. These are the fast concept types which has an average order value of roughly six bucks. We're talking about five to seven dollars, so we take an average of six. With a typical space, we're looking at around 300 to 500 square foot place, not too big, but just enough for you to be able to operate. You need to situate these locations at high traffic places because of the volume that you need in order for you to be able to generate the profit that you're looking for. Um, and the amount of servers and talent that you need at the space is quite limited as well. So you need little to no server, maybe one or two uh, baristas, and that's about it. Now, in terms of projection of how much you're gonna be able to make at a location like this, Given the fact of a $6 average for an item, you're looking at around and aiming at 300 different orders per day. That itself would net you around $50,000 per month. And that itself is an amazing business if you're looking for something that is less in stress, less in investment, and less in workload. For example, our ice cream shop, 720 Sweets, is a fast concept restaurant. Um, we serve ice cream, we serve bubble tea, and these are really high generating items that we have. And it's for us, it only took us three months in order for us to be able to open up the shop. All the equipment that we have was the ice cream uh, machine, we have under the counter cooler, and that's about it. So for us, the investment to open up this place was only 100 grand. And in turn, um, actually I talk about it in this video, how we made more than $36,000 in our first month. And this itself is an amazing uh, location for someone that wants uh, something simple. Something simple for us, we only have around five employees per location and that's on a rotating basis. And on really, really busy days, we have three people. But aside from that, to manage that shop is completely hands off for me, which is the reason why I love this model because it's profitable when you can make it profitable when you look at all the different numbers and when you can actually um, control them and know what to do with them. Now we're going to be diving into the pros of running a fast concept shop. We're talking about a low investment item. So at the end of the day, because you have a, such a small place, the amount of equipment that you need to purchase is completely like bare bone minimums. Okay, you're not looking at a hooded fan, you're not looking at a deep fryer, a full on scale kitchen whatsoever. The investment is relatively lower. The setup is a lot easier as well. So that means that city permits and everything is going to be a lot easier for you to get and also the amount of labor you need is substantially lower than a full service place which is why these type of concepts are so 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 popular because of the fact that it's so hard to be able to find talent out there these are the pros now the cons of running a business like that is that it has limited amount of offering that you you have for your customers and in turn the revenue that you're able to generate is substantially lower than if you were able to offer food um, and different items as well so these are the pros and cons of running a fast concept place the second type of food concept that you're gonna be looking at is the fast food type. And I'm talking about something like a donair, something like a burger, something like a banh mi. These are food items that are quick grab and go. So average prices we're looking at is around eight to 15 bucks. So we're gonna put it at $11 at our average pricing for our projections. So for a place like this, we're looking at around 500 to 900 square feet. You don't need that big of a space. 
So we actually don't need front of the house staffing it as well because for small places like that, people are used to grab and go. They're not expecting full service, which is very, very beneficial for you because it keeps the cost much lower. For a projection like this, we're looking at, once again, $11 average pricing. That nets around $2,750 at 250 servings per day, okay? so. In a month, you're gonna be able to generate around $77,000 for a concept like this. Not too shabby. Uh, once again, this is a little bit better than the fast concept places. Now, some of the pros of a fast concept place is that the investment is also re relatively lower than comparing to a full service diner whatsoever because of the fact that the equipment you need is, once again, a little bit less. Um, the skill level to produce these items is, once again, a lot lower than a full service diner. Um, also, the labor issue is a lot less. And on top of that, the, the revenue that it can actually potentially bring in is a little bit higher than a fast concept place. Now the cons of running a fast food joint is the fact that the equipment is a little bit higher in costing, the investment is a little bit higher, and on top of that, uh, you're gonna be able to cap your revenue based upon the offering that you're offering. So at 11 bucks, you can't really offer too much at, at this different location, right? So for example, if you look at a donor shop, you know, they can only offer so much. People only go in, grab and go for lunch. They go in for a quick dinner. That itself is limiting uh, the different revenue streams that they can generate. The third type of restaurant that you can build is the casual dining. So for casual dining, you do need front of the house staffing. You do need a little bit more service. So an average pricing, we're looking at around $16. So there's gonna be drinks involved. There's gonna be desserts involved. Um, that's the type of places that people actually go in and it's like a hole in the wall shop that you're looking at. Grandma's recipe, maybe spaghetti that you're creating. So these are examples of the casual dining experience. So for a place like this, you're looking at roughly around a thousand square feet. That gives people enough place to actually soak in the ambience of the place and actually enjoy the food that you're offering. So the location of a casual dining, it could be at a high traffic location or it could be a destination mainly because um, you, people don't mind driving to a specific place just so then they can have like the best spaghetti uh, in town. So at the end of the day, you can actually choose a location that's a little bit further from high traffic. Now for a projection in terms of how much money can you make at a casual dining, we're looking at roughly 3,200 bucks per month given an average value of $16 per meal and on a monthly basis you're looking at roughly $90,000. So this is your million dollar business if you're looking to create a business, a food and beverage establishment that's going to cross the seven figure mark, a casual dining experience would be able to help you get there. Now some of the pros of running casual dining, first of all it is super super fulfilling because now you can actually create your grandma's recipe and you can actually bring it to the world and for everyone to enjoy this recipe and it gives you a lot more creativity for people to consume your offering. Um, also, the pros is that the revenue that you're able to generate is much more. This is your seven-figure business and that's amazing. However, the cons of running a casual dining experience is the fact that the investment, once again, is gonna be much higher than a fast concept, fast food. Um, the equipment will be needed that you need to run a place like that is much more. Um, the city permits you need as well. Um, the labor level that you need to operate a joint like that is gonna be higher because when you make a recipe, a dish, there's much more variables that can go wrong and you need to buy much more uh, cost of good souls ingredients and you need to make sure you manage them properly and if you don't manage them properly even though you're making a million dollars you could still be making way less than someone that's running a fast concept shop that's because you don't control your cost of goods sold properly once again these are the pros and cons i really hope you can make yourself a million dollars with this casual dining experience last but not least the number four type is a full service dining experience we're talking about this is like full on front of the house staffing you have food service, you have wine, you have dessert, everything, people are coming to greet you by your first name. Average item cost is around 50 bucks. 
for a location like this, you need it to be a bigger place. We're talking about 1,500 square foot to 3,000 3, square foot. Um, now, the average ticket cost, we're looking at around $50 because once again, there's wine, there's full meal, appetizer, dessert, everything, okay? Now, for an average daily sales, we're looking at around $6,500. And every month, you're looking at $180,000 in terms of revenue. So it is gonna be like a much, much bigger in terms of revenue-wise. However, it requires a lot more intricate systems that needs to be put in place. And I'm gonna be going into the pros and cons of this for you. Although the revenue is there, just keep in mind the one thing. This may not be something that you are signing up for. Just because the revenue is there does not mean the stress level is worth it, does not mean the risk level is worth it, does not mean the work level is worth it, which is the reason why I always, always stay away from concepts like this. But nonetheless, I feel like I should cover it in this video for you. So here you go, the pros and cons of running a fine dining experience. One of, of course, the pros of running a fine dining experience is that you have your creation out there for the world to experience. You're basically creating art for your customers and that fulfillment is definitely irreplaceable, okay? Now also, if you can actually manage your restaurant properly, this fine dining experience properly, and you have lineups out the door all the time, the revenue, the finance reward that is gonna be give you it's much much higher we're talking about over millions of dollars in terms of revenues now on the flip side the cons the investment to create a fine dining experience is well over a million dollars and i can guarantee you that because we're talking about a full-on ambience a full-on you know, makeover of a unit we're talking about a, um, alcohol license we're talking about Full on kitchen with basically all your grease trap, all, all the things that you may need to run a fine dining experience. And on, on top of that, the labor that is involved to run a fine dining experience is just out of the world. We're talking about like you need to give them way proper training. They need to make sure that they greet their guests accordingly. The expectation is much, much higher for people that are serving and also the food that needs to come out. So it's a lot of people have trouble finding talent to create good food for them. And on top of that, controlling your food costs to make sure that you have a business that is profitable, that's not making millions of dollars in revenue, but not making you millions in profits. So there you go, the food money making models for your food and beverage shop. I can't thank you enough for watching this video at this moment. However, there's three more things you wanna consider when choosing the vehicle of your choice to bring you to your destination. At the end of the day, just because someone else is running a bubble tea joint that is super successful, doesn't mean it's suitable for you. That if you have dreams of bringing your grandma's recipe and showing it to the world, then that's not the place for you. That's not the model you wanna choose. You wanna choose a casual dining experience that you can provide your customers that's the type of model now I'm going to be covering the three different elements to consider when choosing the different models that you would be best suitable for your needs okay the number one thing that you want to consider is the stress level are you are you signing up for being super stressed out every single day for years to come or do you want to just have a coffee shop that you would want to go to you don't mind it not making that much money to begin with and you have time to spend with it and you meet all the customers there and you just have this really homey place it's really coming down to your stress level that you wanna take on. For some people, they like that chaotic environment. They like being in that stressful environment because that's how they thrive. So with different types of business models, they have different types of stress levels. So know what you're signing up for before you choose that type of vehicle. The second element to consider is the risk level. We're talking about if you're, if you're wanting to open a fine dining experience full on with alcohol license, you're talking about over millions of dollars in investment. Are you up for that type of risk? Are you gonna put your house on refinance just so then that way you can create this fine dining experience with no experience? Or do you have a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars saved and you just want something that is your own? You wanna escape your nine to five and you just wanna have a coffee shop that you feel good about and that you can actually just be there and you're completely fine with it. Well, the risk level of a $100,000 investment and a million dollar investment, that's completely different. So at the end of the day, consider the risk level for your needs because everyone's needs are different. The third type of element to consider is the work level. At the end of the day, with 
you in the food and beverage industry, work level is always gonna be like crazy. For the first six months, you're gonna be working in the business all day long until you have a process in place, until you figured out uh, how to hire people that can help you out. So after the fact that you are working there for six months, everything is already on automation. Do you want to continue be, to be working in the, your business? Do you wanna be in the kitchen cooking up your grandma's recipe and showing the world how great it is. That's a casual dining experience. Or do you want to just my, just like, hey, you know what? This is an investment. I have a bubble tea shop. I hired people to be able to run it for me on automation. And I'm just going to go there once a week just to check it up. That's for me is the work level that I chose, which is the reason why I chose a fast concept because it's very easy for me to be able to monitor the type of work and the type of quality that people are, 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 are churning out and at the end of the day, it really comes back down to your work level that you're choosing to meet your needs. So there you go, the four different money-making models to follow when choosing your food and beverage concept. At the end of the day, just because someone is successful with a bubble tea shop doesn't mean it suits your needs. Choose the one vehicle that brings you to your destination. Choose the one that is the most fitting for you. There's three things to consider when choosing it. We're talking about the risk level, the work level, and the stress level. Do not, do not be tempted to follow what other people are doing. Choose one that is the most fitting for you. I really hope you find success in this whole journey of opening up your own restaurant, your own food and beverage concept. Uh, if you guys need more resources, I've actually compiled everything that I've learned throughout my past five years of running my ice cream chain all into this model from choosing the type of business to actually doing all the, mm, the margins, all the math behind it, to finding your customers, to menu designs, to finding talent to be able to work for you, to all the marketing tactics that I've actually been able to use to grow my business all into this one website and link. It is in the link below. If you guys want to learn more about it, check it in the link below and I'm going to be sharing a lot more goodies and nuggets with you. Otherwise, Subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna be making much more of these videos. Comment below and tell me exactly what you wanna create and support along the journey by smashing the like button. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.